So, like we always do, we're going to start at that end. I don't know why, but we're going to start this end uh, with introductions. Hi, I'm the wonderful Billy Cliff from GeekRadioDaily.com. Ding. Ding! Thank you so much. Uh, your sometimes weekly non-award-winning podcast that keeps you up to date with all of your fantastic geeky information. And of course, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and I swear to God our forms are going to come back up as soon as we move them because, damn, PHP sucks apparently. Sorry. A little, <laughs> little, little hatred there. Just a little. I'm Angela Pritchett. I was kind of drug up here a moment ago. She was drugged to be up here. That's, yes, that's, that's drugged. Important. And how do people best know you? I'm on Galfrey Pirate Radio, and I'm also an actress and a special effects makeup artist. I worked on films like Plan 9, the remake that just filmed in Virginia last year, and the Pork Chop franchise, which is the slasher horror film. Slasher 5, where's Big Mask? Goes around killing teens. And was ever, who was at the masquerade last night? Oh yeah, I got best in show with the masquerade last night too. In what costume? In the clockwork android from Doctor Who. Nice. Yes. I oh, love her you. That was an awesome costume. Yes. Thank you. And, and you are? And I am Davy Beauchamp, um, author, editor, podcaster. I am the indecisive guy. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. And the creator of Gal- Galaxy. Oh, no. crap! Wow. Gallifrey. Gallifrey. Gallifrey Pirate, Pirate Radio. Yes. Radio. They got me through my master's degree. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. exactly. You can't sip till they clap. That's the rule. <laughs> I not too bad. I'm going to be sipping a lot. So what's the point of this, Dave? What is, the point is, the doctor can solve any problem just by talking. Even dialects stop to chat with, the, with him. Could he cope with a remorseless enemy that isn't interested in banter? Oh, is that the description or is that That's, a question? That that, no, about? that is the description. OK. But I mean, hasn't he already done that? Um, look at the angels. Yes. In, in, in Blink. I mean, they never once talked to the doctor. Nope. Now, in Time of Angels, they talked to the doctor. Angel Bob. Yeah. <laughs> well, in Blink, he didn't directly confront them. I mean, he was just giving advice to them. Then he was just saying, you're going to die. <laughs> Well, and that's that's the fun thing about that episode, though, is at the end of the episode we see where he's, you know, yeah, he, the beginning of the episode from his perspective. If we had followed him, we don't know what he actually did or didn't try to do, which is one of the greatest yeah. things about that episode. Which honestly, I, I'm actually looking forward to episode five of the new season, which is actually filming in New York right now. That's right now, because all because it is it is an Angel episode, and it definitely looks like it's going to be spoilers. It's not really a spoiler. Uh, well, I mean, not really. Um, but I, I think we're finally going to see how he actually confronts the angels as the assassins of time. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things. I, villains can be. You're right. ETH. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, the, sometimes villains, especially the angels, I don't know. I, I don't think they were as effective in their second appearance overall because of that stuff they added to it. Oh, if you watch an angel, you become an angel. Go, okay. Well, see, because at the end of that episode, too, you had the pictures that she had that she handed to the doctor mm-hmm. of the angel. Right, so the doctor should be becoming an angel. Well, well see, I'm, I'm kind of curious because, I mean, did Moffat re- rewrite the rules or does Moffat know a set of rules that we don't see, know yet? 
And I'm going to say he knows a set of rules we don't. Yeah. Because Moffat is, if it was Davies, I would say he just changed his name. Exactly, yeah. But Moffat is, is just doing that so that next one he'd be like, ha ha, you thought you knew and look what I did. And also you have to understand, that set of episodes had a lot to stand up to because Blink was so amazing. And, yeah. you know, and it's Blink, made us forget that, story. Blink made us forget that if you had a pair of mirrored sunglasses, you'd be fine. The second one, all I can think about was, damn, if someone had mirrored sunglasses. <laughs> and actually, yeah. it, has, it makes people scared to look at statues. We were at Red Robin's, and he was terrified. The Robin, God, Red this Robin. Robin was staring at me. <laughs> this like, giant I think statue. I at was going to come at me right I mean, away. It was horrifying. How many people were Dragon Con last year? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Nice. Did you see the angels? Yes. yes. Yeah, dressed as angels. All my just, friends were there dressed as angels. And they would wait till you and, and wait till you turn around. And they would just keep being in different positions. <laughs> they were brilliant. That's one of my next costumes. Now I can say angel. Nice. So then, since we know that he can defeat someone he can't talk to, like Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster. Oh, you get all <laughs> yes. Is that the Douglas Adams over there? Ah, uh, I don't know if that was the Douglas Adams. If not, it's near. It, it, it's in that time period. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, and honestly, did the Abominable Snowman actually, or did Yeti actually say anything but growl at him? Well, Chewbacca just growls. That's a language. It could be a language. We don't know. Yeah, but the robots. True. Okay. Well, Bigfoot was a robot. He was. Yeah. Six million dollar man. Look it up, kids. Yes. True. <laughs> See, cross, cross, cross up the, or cross, uh, franchises. The question I've been waiting to ask you about this topic is, is Doctor Who versus Xenomorph, where, what time point, I suppose, in the overall Alien franchise, does the Doctor show up in? Ooh, that's a good call. I almost want to say the Prometheus. See, I was going to ask you if you could go that far back. <laughs> yes, and because I don't know. I, I think Prometheus, I mean, from what I've seen in the trailers, I totally think that um, I, I can see the Doctor oh, meddling around saying. there. I thought that was supposed to be a people. Oh, is yeah, it is. It's its its own movie. It's like a side story in the yeah. Alien universe. Ba basically, it's a, it, it tells the story of the space jockey. Yeah, if you remember the space jockey in the first one, it's in the yes. trailer and it's beautiful. And I showed my wife, I paused, I'm like, oh my god, look, look, look. Yeah. And she's like, what, what is that? Like, it's the space jockey from Alien, just sitting there in that big room. And it, yeah, yeah. There's even, there's even, if you slow the trailer down, there is a statue of a xenomorph. Yeah. If no, I look, mean, yeah. yeah the, I mean, and it's they're, very quick. They're going to be in that movie. I think it's going to be at the very, very end of the movie, but we're going to see him. I mean, I just don't see how he can get away without it. Oh, there's no chance because he's been hinting around it. Yeah. Like, well, I would be interested in producing and writing an Aliens prequel, but not directing it. You have to direct it. Screw that. I'm going to make this movie called Prometheus that has the, that has the same corporation yes. <laughs> that, has, that has the same sort of artificial life forms that has the space shock. Yes. So while that would be weird, because if he was there in that part of the timeline, there would not be as much information for him to have about it. Exactly. And I think he'd find it much more fun. Because I assume we're skipping AVP, and AVP R, the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I would have paid twenty dollars to see a predator dressed as an alien in that movie. I would have. And that's it. That's it. So if he's in the yeah. Prometheus timeline, we don't know much about the Xenomorphs at this stage. Right. Are they even more feral or whatever? I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, supposedly they take on the attributes That's true. of whatever they um, hatch from. Which makes you wonder then, the space jockey. So the aliens we saw in Alien, are they traits of I space know. jockeys? I There's know. so many questions yes, about this. I'm so Dr. excited Ray. about this movie. Dr. Easy. Well, see, the doctor's going to pop up because something's gone wrong in the time space continuum. The TARDIS. <laughs> something's wrong with the TARDIS. No. Idris will just Idris. take forever. Idris is going to take him where he needs <laughs> to be. I'm, I'm going to take him to these really creepy alien things. <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to have to show up with a team of other people because we're going to need at least three or four people knocked off before we really realize what so we might like. Lifestyle's in the library. <laughs> Lifestyle's in the library. So we're going to need some cannon fodder. We're going to need a little bit of, like, um, you know, with the sonic screwdriver analyzing the alien, the, the alien acid blood. <laughs> oh, no, no, man. I just realized. These are, these, are, these are cockroaches for the doctor. They yeah, are. They were just in his Thank TARDIS. Yeah. It's his fault. <laughs> we, we need, the, we need the, the group, the coward that's going to die. Think about it. The, the, the TARDIS has been everywhere and anywhere. It's been across dimensions. There's no telling what sort of infestations it could have picked up along the way. Yeah. 
from the xenomorphs are roaches. Okay. From the TARDIS. Wow. Being exposed to the uh, Typhor types. <sighs> That's a little creepy. Yeah, very creepy. It's like, it's like the, the TARDIS is that really trashy hotel or that apartment in New York. Oh, come on. Look at Baker's TARDIS when they were running through it in some episodes. Oh, which Baker? Oh, Tom. Tom Baker. Tom. The Baker. Yeah. The Baker. Yeah. yeah. When we, when we say Baker, it's usually Tom Baker. When you say Colin, you'll say it, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, that's that's the. A lot of yeah. Colin Baker's hatred towards him is not his fault. They gave him some really, really awful scripts, and a lot of the audio work he's done afterwards has been it's amazing. Really, yeah, really basically, the awful. BBC was trying to kill Doctor Who at the time. Yeah. Um, but that's why Baker. They, they're releasing really now in the UK. There are some amazing audios with him and the actress who played Leela. And I gotta say, the Arizona solution is Colin Baker at his best. Oh my god, it's awful. Don't watch that movie. <laughs> Scratch that. Do not even look it up. It's a horrible <laughs> movie that's not Doctor Who at all. It's called The Arizona Solution. It was because... You will you will, you will will not thank him for say, saying that. Because since the BBC was not allowed to do the 30th anniversary, because of... They the, decided to do a movie on protecting the planet. <laughs> because of the, uh, the Fox oh. TV movie, they basically... The American movie... 86, the big 30th yeah. anniversary oh, thing shit. they were going to do. And so a group decided to do this on their own, the Air Surge Solution. You'd be surprised how many oh, people cool. are in it. It's, it's amazing. So bad. There's, so, there's every doctor that's pretty much alive and some companions <laughs> and the voice of what, the Daleks? Yeah, the guy who would um, do it. The guy who originally did the voice of the Daleks. There's some writers in there. It's just like a big Doctor Who mashup with the worst story ever. Yeah, but honestly, if you think so about it. the three doctors? It, no, it's like the... You know, that was for you. That one was for you. No, if you think about it, with what they were doing to people on that, oh, that, that fits they in perfectly in there. With, the, with the xenomorphs. Because we don't know, because in the Prometheus timeline, they, they show that man might be responsible for, actually for, for the xenomorphs. The doctor is responsible for the xenomorphs. Yeah, we saw it in the Arizona <laughs> Solution. We saw them mutating people. That wasn't the doctor. That was a company making so it worse. Going so going they could just give everyone gills. Oh, so come on. We're totally... We're totally going on mechanical here. Anyway. So the simple fact of the matter is, is that they Wait, would have, cannon? They would have to be on a spaceship with some people Star going Wars? on a mission that they don't know about. Of course, exactly. of course we're gonna rip off Alien. We have to. Yeah. Because one of them is going to be the you know other life form, the oh, robotic yeah. android life form. Yeah. And no one else knows about it. The doctor will be learning this, because that's the trick. We can be we can be in community. Jamie Lee Curtis can be in it. God, yes. Jamie Lee Curtis can be in anything. She, she can be wants. she can be a companion! Yeah. Yes, it's yes. actually pretty awesome. <laughs> yes, she could. I, I would, I, I, I would, uh, I would not be so bad. Oh, I, I would like to see the Doctor Stop. versus the Xenomorph because this is one of those moments where the Doctor does want to talk to people. He yeah. does want to solve them. He does hate it. It does bother him when he has to. Okay, fine. I'm gonna have to wipe you out. Yeah, but we're also this little picture of Matt Smith trying to talk to this thing and the, the mouths coming out. He's yeah, like, but okay. We're assuming that he does not <laughs> speak the xenomorph. Because I mean, they do hiss and they do make sound. It does not mean he can't. He speaks baby, for God's sake. Okay. Well, the TARDIS translates again. everything. <laughs> if I can have a geek we're moment. Just language anyway. If I can have a geek moment. <laughs> Aliens do not have a, a language of that sort. In fact, in Alien Hive, the fantastic miniseries from Dark Horse, uh, they, they, someone built a robotic so xenomorph yes, I remember to that. put in there because yeah. it was treated, they were like basically an ant colony. So yeah. their communication is more of an instinctual level, a pheromonal level, than it is anything else. So for the doctor to even try to communicate on that kind of level, oh, he's going to have to take an alien carcass that's still fresh and hook it to the TARDIS to try to make it talk. You know, basically a chemistry set that he's ripped off from somebody's kitchen, trying to make these pheromones and be like, is this it? Is this it? <laughs> the real, that's it. This is happening. The real reason I'd want to see it is because I would actually want Tom Baker because I'd like to see the two minutes of him desperately trying to get the scarf off as the <laughs> is, is just eating through it. Yeah, well, it would be great because Matt Smith would manage to just spill it on himself. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, I can't wear that shit. Well, see, he would get a fez again just for a moment, and then lose it to the acid. Exactly. How that would work. So what would his plan be? I mean, who, okay, 
Which let's, let's pick a doctor. Which doctor is it? We're we going now. We're we going right, right now. Are we going? I don't know. Right I, I, I'm saying I think each one would solve the problem differently. Mm -hmm. See, that's a fair point. I mean, right. honestly, could you imagine the first doctor? Hartnell would kill them all. <laughs> yes. Because yes. If, I don't know. I don't know how old you guys are, but Hartnell beat the shit out of, an, out of a caveman with a rock. Yes. And I guess it's a two. No. <laughs> Uh, the cavemen are like, what is this <laughs> weird tree? Yeah. Get off of my lawn. Oh, Hartnell would, would, <laughs> like would really, I mean, he would destroy them. He's like Without Samuel a L. Thought. Jackson and Doctor Who's. I hate it. Kind of. I mean, he would, <laughs> he would back up and he would just blow the entire ship up. He really would, for the greater good. <laughs> Gotta protect Susan. Uh, Trevor. Second Doctor. He wow. would lull them to sleep to his recording. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would find some way to beat them with Sonics. With his Sonic, because honestly, he was the, one, the first one with the Sonic toolkit. True. So he would have like the Sonic, actually, there was a Sonic hammer, a Sonic screwdriver, Sonic pliers, all in this Sonic toolkit. And with, and, he was and, the third doctor who really overused the Sonic screwdriver. Yeah, but, um, but all that originates with the, with, the, with the second doctor. So, I mean, he would put his full something on this Sonic toolkit. He would actually have to set up, yeah, he yes. set up, uh, that's, that's why we would end up with just a Sonic screwdriver. All exactly. the other Sonic tools all stuff would be destroyed. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and the big Scooby Doo trap that he would have to set up. We, we just figured it out. We, know, we now know why there is no so longer a Sonic tool. Game. There it is. And I just imagine Jamie and them running through the hot corridors, the aliens following them. Yeah. <coughs> the wind going through her. But I want, I want Victoria yes, as Victoria a companion for awesome. that one. Okay. I, I want Victoria that. as a companion for that I one. I see that. Yes. All right. Moving on. Pertweet. Gadget. It would be some sort of gadget because he was the gadget who. He would, uh, he would and drive the Who Mobile. Which one? That's the Who Mobile. But see, but see, for him, it would be a whole, it would be a whole new threat level because yes. chances are he was going to be stuck on Earth, you know, from his banishment from the yes. Time Lords. So that means the Xenomorphs would have to make it to Earth at some point, or to borrow just the slightest bit from the slightly good idea that was an ABP. He could find the old, yes. the old thing where they've been here yeah. in the past. Unit would have found it. Unit would have found it. Yes. Unit has it in the back, and all of a sudden yes. something happens, and it's starting to hatch because we've done something, and yeah. they call in the doctor. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. So how would perfect? What gadget? Would oh, he, make he, he he would just build something. That's he what he would did. make the uh, bat anti xenomorphic belt. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Ninja that thing. In the back of Jack, living through the his time he was one of the many times he has, be like, oh, what's this? Oh shoot! I did, uh, I did something in my own. You know that's a good point. Captain Jack can leave some hints. Yes. <laughs> yay, yeah, Captain Jack! Yes. Oh yeah, we can finally kill Captain Jack. He no, we can kill him. When I think it was the Night Doctor came around, Jack. but Jack was sent back in time many. True. Jack's been so back and forth in time. <laughs> and, Tor and Torchwood alone, how many times did he go back know, to the very end? And, and, and have <laughs> be so, like, so apparently you'd be like, oh, like from hey, Doc, you yeah. have this interesting thing. And Jack would be like, in the background, like, what's this switch do? <laughs> you know, what's like, this button do? Actually, oh that would be a good crossover. Torchwood, Torchwood right. And Torchwood and would yeah. actually find, yeah, yeah, Torchwood would actually yeah. be responsible yeah. for that. But you know what, just thinking here, it takes us totally off topic. I would love to have seen Hartnell, the first Doctor, and Jack oh. interact. They would kill each other. Yes! <laughs> and then Captain Jack would hit on her and be like, oh please. <laughs> no, you know. Is there any, seriously, I'm sorry, let's take a quick informal poll. Is there anyone Captain Jack could hit on that it wouldn't work? Is there anyone in this audience that could say that Captain Jack's flirtation would not work for them? Really? You are lying to, you can lie to me, but don't lie to yourself. No, I'm sorry. I'm so anti-Jack. But you have pretty long hair. I don't Jack. care. I'm anti-Jack. Why? Because Captain Jack's a hottie. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and the sad I, thing I, is, I want a carpet stand out of Captain is, Jack for the back it, of the is, podcast. Is John yeah. actually yeah. has copies of my books? Okay. Yeah. Um, I like. I love John. I hate Jack. I I don't understand that. This slide is crazy. Jack. Captain Jack. Yeah. Captain Jack. Okay. So Tom we, Baker. We moved to Baker. How is Tom Baker going to get rid of the Zeno? Canine. Now yes. canine is exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking, but for Baker. Does he come back to the overall colonies, leaving Earth, Ark in space, beast below time type of thing? Is it, oh. it is it a xenomorph on one of those ships? Because they had to stop at a small place to get some kind yeah, of Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, Ark in Boom. Indy, man, yeah. And it would be K9 that saves the day. Yes, oh, K9 K9 awesome. saved the day so many times. 
or Sarah J. It would be Kate Knight or Sarah J. So, it would be, be great to see Leela fight the Z Yeah, that would be awesome because she'd be in her like little leather outfit with her like... Gets it by, you know, someone gets it by acid. Um, this is, no. Okay. No. Well, no, it's, you, know, you got to think about it. Yes. Yeah, you got to think about it. <laughs> so Baker would actually try to set a, he would set a trap, not as elaborately as Scooby-Doo style. Well, you know what I was thinking? You know who actually could actually be behind the third Doctor's encounter with the alien, with the Xenomorph, or Tom Baker's encounter with the Xenomorph? The Master. I could totally see the Master using... He sends him an Easter basket. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You know, that just, that's a whole new Easter egg hunt that I can't wait. I can't wait to play that. There's the Easter special right there. The doc, okay, Baker would sacrifice K9 to, to rid the Xenomorph. Yes, I mean, he sacrificed K9. How many times has he? Exactly. He'll just replace another one. Exactly. Exactly. He replaced him with a newer model. That's what he does. Yes, he does. Uh, Davidson. My favorite doctor. Um, wow. I can, no, honestly, I can see um, it could be because of the, uh, the Black Guardian, the Master again, no. Torlu, no. uh, Torlu, how? Cyberman. Oh, <laughs> Cyberman is, it, the Cyberman would use the Xenomorph as a way to control the human population because they would go and infest and get rid of the rest of them to make them out of them. I lost it. That's, that's all I had. That's all I had. Well, I mean, I, I it's been a long weekend, praying and staring at. Honestly, th I, that's the toughest one. I really don't know how the fifth Doctor would actually run into run into the Xenomorphs. I don't. Anyone? How does Peter Davison run across the, the fifth Morphs? Doctor? I mean, because he was so different out of you know his predecessors. I mean, different philosophies and everything. I mean, celery is different. Yes, yes it celery. is. Don't Celery's kill them with vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of Peter Davis. I did. No, 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 think about it. Xenomorphs. Just celery. Hey, decorative vegetables. We've never seen it takes a, a real man to pull that off. We've never seen a xenomorph attack vegetation. It could be their kryptonite. It's yeah. entirely possible. And I would love to that see that. That piece of celery. <laughs> well, see, he I takes off the celery it. right to the yes. mouth of the no. queen. No, see, <laughs> I, I think it was in slow motion. Would the, the plant people he became friends with? He became friends with. That'd be far more interesting. Then you've got to find me a Davison before we can move on. I'm thinking. I mean, honestly, I don't know how. Okay, here's here's how this would work. We would redo the Caves of Androsony and make it even oh more horrific because now That's we enough. lose him to a Xenomorph. And we can also get rid of Harry in the same, same fell swoop. Oh, there you are, Harry. Yes. Chop. And so that would just be, he'd have to, like, oh, that, I, I mean, the cave-ins, earthquake, he'd have to do sonic I mean, again. Yes, he saves a day, but of course he's not dying because of the radiation, he's dying because fatally hit by acid, which explains why he regenerates into the hideous Colin Baker. The Ronald McDonald of Dr. Who. Yes. <laughs> Colin Baker. So, how does Colin <laughs> Baker... It's an experiment from the colorful. Exactly. Yeah. Is that her Yes. See, that's yeah. brilliant. Really yes, I, I, I was gonna go with the Ronnie either with with Colin or Sylvester. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. think Colin. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. McCoy. Well, we'll get to McCoy. Soon. So yeah. So the Ronnie, it's an experiment that's gone awry, and what innocent civilization is now at threat because of this experiment gone awry that the doctor feels compelled to make right on. Generic X planet. Generic X planet. <laughs> it really didn't matter in, in that day. Would they be... It's the ice planet. No way, it's the fire planet. Would they be humans <laughs> with a little bit of stuff on their face or would they be humanoids? Let's go humanoids. How they're already making all these aliens. Yeah, true. Yeah, they're already pretty progressed before they even find out. Yes. This is be humanoids. Maybe with some blue paint on them or something. <laughs> So the Navi <laughs> and the doctor comes in. Yes, and it says it's Colin. And I think it was a cutting edge checked out with a computer graphic this time. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so Baker kills them all. How exactly? What did you say? I don't know. Colin Baker, by the way. So you're not Colin <laughs> sacrifices himself. How does he do that? He's, uh, I, I don't know. That's, that's I, just bad, right? I just want it over. Sacrifice himself above. Well, no, he can just try to strangle him like he did his own companion. Um, Wait, what? I can think of three yeah. reasons that wouldn't work. 
two of them are just jaws that come out. Yeah. Like, well, check them behind? It's Colin. Wow, really? Yes. After I just built the man up and said all the wonderful work no, he did in the audio. He's great in the audience, but all I can picture are those horrible episodes. All I can picture is the two doctors. You know, okay, quick side note. Colin Baker does have the the horrible distinction of being the worst dressed doctor, which if you think about that, it's <laughs> <laughs> really something. Oh, they just dropped dead from the horrible fashion sense. Yes! <laughs> they yes. can't handle that at all. It's these these, these little whores are fashionistas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which brings us to McCoy. To McCoy. Yeah. So that's McCoy. McCoy. Now, Sylvester McCoy, for a lot of people that, if you don't, if you didn't watch them all and don't remember, Sylvester McCoy did go to a lot of dark places. His <laughs> doctor got yes. really dark. He was like the darkest in the world. Yeah. Well, I mean, side note on that as well, that was gonna, they were actually, if they continued long enough, they were actually gonna ex explain who he was, who the doctor actually was, and they were literally dropping hints that he could have been, he may not be actually who he said he was from the very beginning, and he could have been around from the very beginning of the Time Lords. Which is how I love that we're hinting at that now. Doctor Who! Yeah. Who? <laughs> I, no, you're being far too subtle for me, sir. Could you, could you just give me Who? Yeah. So where does McCoy meet the Xenomorphs? What timeline do you want to run with all oh, that? Well, Ace blows something up and there it is. Yeah, you would have to have it. It would have to be with Ace. Yeah. Yeah. Because Ace and the bat, and the explosions, yeah. I mean, it just nice screams enough. a perfect, I'd probably say set it after Battlefield. Okay. okay. Yeah. Set it after Battlefield. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See that. Yeah, I just, yeah. Now that's what I would love to see. Screw this Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover, I want to see the Sylvester McCoy Ace Aliens crossover now. That, how, how, does, how does Sylvester McCoy kill off the Zemo? Oh, it sinks to Ace. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Ace, Ace would blow him up and beat him to death at the baseball bat after he's treated it. Which is fun because McCoy would be sitting in the target sipping tea going, good job, nice job. Yes. Nice job. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. I'll buy that. Yes. I'll buy that. Then we come. We come to Paul McGann. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Paul McGann. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Is that the one in the Eric Roberts movie? Like movie? Yes. Yes. I remember Eric Roberts. I don't remember. He's the one that's longer hair. Paul he again. He was very. He was very steampunk yeah. Victorian. He was. Yeah. He really was. Uh, he and was he's, not he's been. The best he script. was. He will that. But the audios are amazing. There are four seasons of audios that you can get for Big Finish that go on after that. After the movie. Is the Doctor who actually is involved in the Time War? that you yeah. keep hearing about. And he's Paul also- Paul McGann had to kill off all the Daleks and all yes. of his own people. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also at, technically the longest running technically, doctor. Yes. Right. Um, of the 96 until the new series, yes. he was the doctor. Because the adventures continued in the comics. Comics, and the comics audios, and, the audios. and the novels. Yeah. The audios are amazing. They're full cast and everything. They, they are. I can't say enough good things about them. And again, if you if you said who, did you not see the Fox TV movie of Doctor Who? And now I've been discour discouraged from seeing it yeah. because of all the awful movies. No, 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 no. It's actually it's I a just decent Doctor yeah. Who episode. I actually it's not just re I just rewatched it not too long ago and I reviewed it and honestly. It's really good. I mean, if you really take out one or two of the major flaws, you just put them to the side. It is just a fun adventure. And it's Let's so funny when you hear McGann actually talk, because he has such a bad Cockney accent, too. Hello there, Mike. No, it's not that bad. It's really, <laughs> it's really not that bad. It's actually, it's actually pretty interesting in the fact that it does start off with Sylvester McCoy in the yeah. TARDIS, taking the master who is now dead, to send him his proper care, and he gets to drink tea. He does. He's always drinking tea, that's all awesome. And there is a horrible problem and calamity and crash, and of yeah. course the doctor dies, and the longest regeneration scene I think I've ever, <laughs> yes. ever seen. Yes. Uh, where he eventually he does get to come back as Paul McGann. Yeah. And, and let me tell you this now, because it, when, once he says this, you might turn it off. Don't turn it off. The bad script does say that the doctor is half human. Yeah. However, um, in one of the later audios, uh, the big thing, the big thing in Eric Roberts, and he's the master, and chewing up scenery like mad beautifully because he was the only fan of yes, Doctor Who. Yes, he was the only one on in, in that movie like, was was uh, uh, the hugest Doctor Who fan, and that's why he took. If he had a mustache, he would have been. Yes. I was like, get this man a mustache. <laughs> he needed the goatee. He needed the goatee. He 
really, he really did. Um, yes, it's they, just glorious. Yes, they make fun of some of the plot holes in the Fox TV movie and later audio works, yeah. and which is a throwaway line. He jokes about how he wants to defeat the master by convincing him that he had what is it that I that I rigged this up. To yes, him. God, what is the exact wording of it? But it's it's really awesome, and, he, and his audio work is. His audios are awesome, not, and his yeah. companions are really cool too. And the BBC yeah. has always claimed him. All yeah. the way. And honestly, he was also the first doctor to have a um, a lesbian companion. Yes. Yeah. She. She. The first homosexual companion officially was um, was I forget what I character's forget name was because it was just in the comics. But yeah, no. Um, yeah. And, I mean, there's there's a lot of important stuff that happened with with McGann's So doctor. Paul McGann would actually meet the Xenomorphs um, during the Time War. It would be during some crazy quest side mission thing to stop yeah. the Daleks on this big thing. And oh my God, here's this big plan they have for humans. They found this. Yeah. That'd be one way to wipe out the human race. I think the Daleks would go The Daleks would absolutely go for that. Yeah. And so McGann would have to, this would be, when he wipes out the yeah. Xenomorphs there along with all the Daleks as part exactly. of the Time War. Exactly. Brilliant! Yes. Exactly. And then he does his hair. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about how he hated that wig. Oh, it was. Because <laughs> they like cut into his forehead, they had to glue it in, yeah. There are times when the wig looks okay, and then there's times where it's like, wow, you have so got a wig. Well, it's, it, it's like the Brigadier's mustache that's always moving all, all over his face. <laughs> Paul McGann's wig, there's this weird strip of hair that for most of the time is sitting right about here at his eye level, except when if you really pay attention, it's either here, it's here, or it's here, it's here, in the same scene. And when he runs, his hair doesn't move, which is really no, it odd. <laughs> it's really odd. The things that I like that I notice. Yeah. So he does that. Okay, yes. so the most... Underloved doctor of all time that I happen to amazingly love, Christopher Eccleston. My favorite. Fantastic. My favorite doctor. Like Less love than Colin Baker? In a lot of circles, yeah. Because he's Colin Baker's been enough now. He's thought of as the emo doctor. He's thought of as the emo doctor. People are now sort of nostalgic for Baker and stuff, and they don't understand what Christopher Eccleston brought to the role. They don't understand that he was the despondent, loner, had been on his own for hundreds of years doctor who gradually, thanks to Rose's interactions, and Jack didn't hurt at all. Jack makes everything better, David. Jack does make everything better. <laughs> the more you went along with Eccleston, the more he became the doctor that we all knew because he was finding <laughs> that part of himself again. And if, it, if you go back and watch that first, that, that Eccleston season, you'll see that. That man did amazing work with that. Goes, that goes around that season. You know, yeah, I know. I mean, from Rose to the very end. Yeah, no. It's amazing. Eccleston was, but not, Eccleston is what they needed to relaunch that show. Yeah, and I mean, he actually was signed for four seasons. Mm -hmm. But he got out of he. I mean, he got out of his contract out of that. because, um, and of course, he really didn't speak about it until that actual four-year contract was over. Which I respect the man for it. He just he could not stand the shooting schedule. It was it was just way too rough. He was used to be either doing miniseries or movies. He was not used to a twelve to thirteen episode TV season because it's it's done totally differently than what you would do for anything else. And it was just grueling for him. And with when even the new even tenant has a problem. Yeah. Yes, and, yes he and, does. And it's not like the man had a lot of spare, mind you. Yeah, but right. he visibly yeah. loses, he's like, just ages and loses weight as, as his tenure goes on. Yeah. I specifically avoided any kind of internet spoilers for Doctor Who when, when it came back. I was like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. So that, yeah, that season finale? <laughs> well, I, the I bells. Honestly, like, like I said, even, you know, Doctor Who wasn't really, I don't think, that big on the interwebs at the time. Because, I mean, I, I was on, on the interwebs uh, and looking at Doctor stuff, and nobody had mentioned the big surprise yeah, that's, that's at the stunning. end of the season. That's yeah. stunning that nobody knew that, because... But i got to say one thing, BBC's going to keep you? those secrets. What did I say to you when the bell started ringing? Out. I the cloister bells. The bell started ringing. She, I, this was her first introduction, was to Eccleston, that the whole run of Doctor Who, she's in love with it. The bells start ringing, and, I just, and, I'm, and she's looking, and I, my face is ashen, and she's like, what? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I am very sorry, but I'll explain it to you later. Because when I, when I heard the cloister bells and he started doing his, his little goodbye speech, I knew what was coming. Yep. And I was just kind of like, how are they going to do this? I mean, because up until then, every regeneration was different the way it looked. Um, and I, I kinda, I'll say this, I, that's one thing I do miss in Uhu, is that they've gone with a, with a, a standard regeneration instead of the flavor of each different regeneration. What bothers me is they've gone with the Highlander quickening. I know! Yes! <laughs> That's what I thought of when I saw the first time. I wanted to be out with the Cody B1. Yeah. That's what I was waiting for. So yeah, well, uh, so Eccleston would have made the Xenomorph win. 
I would it have been before we saw I, I, the new series? I think so. I think before Rose. Because yeah, before, before it, Bad Wolf. It would have been changed. because there would have been no, there would have been very little trying to reason <laughs> at, at that point. I was trying to imagine Rose of no. even seeing one Rose of those things. Poor yeah, Mickey, no, no, no. Mickey would have been like, he just his pants away. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> but even as he ran, I mean, poor Mickey would be gone. But later on, Mickey would not have been. But yeah, um, been but yeah, I, I would say he would he would have encountered them before before Rose. Okay. Yeah, so so loner. So, so we yeah. we could, we could make that up entirely. Yeah, he's just tooling around, going somewhere. <laughs> and that that was that. Wait, any kids in the audience? That would be his old fuck moment right there. Where uh, he's somewhere, he thinks, no, no, he's, he's old enough. He had a good question. He's, he's heard this before. Um, he would have been in some far little corner, of course, because I get the impression that Eccleston, for a long time as the doctor, tried not to get involved, but reluctantly kept me, they yeah. kept pulling me back in. Yeah. Yeah. And he was on the Titanic. He was on the damn Titanic, which yeah. would have been a great place for Xenomorph, if you ask me. Ooh. Maybe. Huh? Yes. Oh, that's really what that happened. happened. That's yeah. what happened. And he's the one who actually sank it. He actually steered into the iceberg Had to sink it. For the greater good. Yes. The Ooh. Underwater. Yes. victory. And then Very stupid Chris James Cameron goes yeah. down there and, and, and releases him. Well, we, Leonardo DiCaprio's yeah. movie will never be the same. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would make that movie so much better. It's it 3D. Better. <laughs> you don't like Titanic either? You don't like Titanic nor Captain Jack? Why is there no humanity in your soul, Dave? Why? Why? Oh, Captain Jack. She sucked it out. What? Okay, that you should have been able to score. All right. So then uh, Eccleston, yes, would have had to have, oh God, probably wiped out an entire... No, world. that's what I'm saying. I mean, I could see that have happened on the Titanic. Yeah, Titanic. And, you know, he, he crashed the thing because he knew it had to happen anyway. He now knows the reason. Now, just now picture this in your head. Picture this in your head. Eccleston as the doctor from the Titanic, getting into the TARDIS to leave as it's sinking. Yeah. Because that's what he has to do. Yeah. That's effing tragic, man. Yes. And, that, and that, that's a lot behind his character. He was a very <coughs> tragic doctor. Though he had his moments of happiness, but he did. I mean, he was a very tragic doctor. He was recovering from the time war. And which was all the, the tiny little And of course, he's also out. still getting off the entire fact that, you know, he just genocide how many races? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's, oh, what's 1,500 people? I, I mean, know. honestly. I think when he first saw the Xenomorph, he would have been because it's new. It, well, yeah. well, if Eccleston saw the Xenomorph, and if we go with the concept that all the doctors have encountered them, <laughs> yes. which I don't know if we're doing at this point, yeah. but if McCoy had killed, if McGann had killed them all off, and then Eccleston sees them, he would be a little hopeful because if they survived, maybe somebody else did. Yes. Maybe. It would have given him that little glimmer of hope yes. and made him even more tragic when he had to kill Leonardo DiCaprio to get to save his soul. <laughs> so, uh, Tennant. I'm totally on that. So David Tennant, and by the way, I did love, I did enjoy David Tennant's run as the Doctor. I enjoyed it very much. However, for all of the David Tennant fans, and for all the people you know who are David Tennant fans, ask them how much they enjoy carrying around the Christopher Eccleston sonic screwdriver. Because David Tennant didn't get a new one. Nor did he get a new TARDIS background. Exactly. Well, technically the screwdriver did slightly change the way to swap from Tennant to Eccleston. In what capacity? The handle was like cracked for some pretty color change. The, uh, so David Tennant didn't have enough imagination to come up with a completely new Sonic screwdriver. <laughs> he just changed the color scheme. <laughs> and then Tennant was a lot more cracked than that was in this place. Of course, he probably dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know you're standing there, hey bro, oh, the cloister goes, oh Jesus, there it is. <laughs> it was Jack, he kissed the doctor, he's like, fudge! <laughs> it, would, it would make you lose your bearings for a moment. <laughs> It was that kit. And you get 10 bonus points for saying fudge. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so where does Tenet? Well, he has, the entire time he has to wear the 3D glasses. Of course he does. Because yeah. that's, <laughs> well, I love the 3D glasses. That's the highlight of the Tenet era for me is the 3D glasses. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that, I mean, that's, that's a tough call. Because, I mean, he went everywhere and anywhere. So, you know, I'm an everywhere, man. I'm trying to think. Wiggly, wobbly, tiny, whiny. Which companion was he with? Was it what was it was it Martha? Was it, 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 it would, um, yeah, Martha. It was Martha. It would have to be Martha because Rose would be able to handle it. Rose Donna would like, was stop crying. Donna would kick some Martha. Donna would kick some Xenomorph, yes. but yes. but Martha was a doctor. But Martha be, was a doctor, and I think 
I, I, yeah, I, I think it would have made a better, I think it would make a better episode if it was Doc, if it was him and Martha. Because she would have, you know, because how great was the introduction of Martha, where he's talking to her and she's asking those kinds of questions. Yes, yes exactly. Why can't we breathe on the moon? That's a damn fine <laughs> question. She was thinking along those lines. Yeah. Where Donna, I loved Donna. She was probably my favorite of the new companions until Amy Monster came along. See, <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine Donna talking to Xenomorph to death, though. You're gonna do what? With the double mouth <laughs> and no bleeding and no melts everything? How's what? that practical? And what was that? How was that not? <laughs> and the doctor's trying to say, no, 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 hush! Wait, you! <laughs> You know, okay, I take it back. I think I'd rather say it. Well, it's okay. So if it's if it's Tennant and Donna, where do they meet? The oh, ah, <laughs> see, I, I, I don't know. Where was what? Oh. Maybe after oh, this. Wait a minute, punch man. Pompey goes off and it launches the Xenomorphs into space, and the Doctor realizes all the actresses. And Harry picks up an anomaly, and he has to fight the Xenomorphs, which are trying to kill him because they're pissed off. Working. So Pompeii was a cover for a, for a, a ship taking off. It was the Xenomorphs were under Pompeii. The Xenomorphs were under Pompeii. Okay. And they realized that, and when the volcano went off and launched their ship into space and woke them up, and they were pissed at whatever did that, and so they were going back to Earth to wipe out the entire planet. I think you've got a a, a germ of a good idea there, but the Xenomorphs don't have a ship themselves. So they have to take somebody else's. Well, but I like the idea well, of the about, doctor restoring well, was, a ship. Well, there was the alien <coughs> ships. The, yeah, the yeah. Other in the 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 Because the remember, they're ship. in the ship. They are. In they that are. One ship. No, no, you yeah. got it. Boom, boom. Yeah. We don't, do we have a prize for this guy? Yeah. Yeah. I wish. You want a sticker? Because <laughs> you totally get a sticker, dude. Yes. That's, sticker. That's good. A sticker. Okay. That's I'll give it to him after the thing because I don't want to like trip and fall on camera. That'd be hilarious. Okay, I do like that one. So how does Tenet? Because Tenet. Tenet, Tenet was the doctor who absolutely thought that killing anyone or anybody was completely wrong. Oh, he, oh no he wasn't. Well, he tried to. <laughs> like the doctor usually does. No, we're going to talk to it. No, fine. Let me shoot you in the face with a bazooka. <laughs> I'm sorry, a sonic bazooka. <laughs> I mean, if there's a ship, it makes it all right. Yeah. If it was a ship, he would just blow them up. That's kind of boring. That's boring to right, I mean, that's what, what that's what Tenet did. Okay, so what, why does he not blow it up at first? What is the drama that keeps him from blowing it up until the end of the two-parter that Davies wrote? <laughs> the first part <laughs> being amazing, <laughs> and the second yeah, part oh, no. being all right. At first it was Donna trying to save him because she was always trying to be his moral compass at okay. times. Right. And that's the only reason why. Yeah, especially yeah. after, after the fires of Pompeii when he's like, no, don't, you know, don't let the, don't blow Pompeii. I mean, that'd be a perfect, uh, you know, parallel there. Wow. Well done. Yes. Oh, well, we, we just yeah, lost. He just walked out. Fine, get in those guys. <laughs> I, I contributed yeah. a stupid sticker. <laughs> sticker. <laughs> I wanted the earrings to get out. <laughs> so, Matt Smith. Matt Smith Matt and Xenomorphs. Smith. Okay, so they go into this time anomaly that gives them three Amy Pawns. <laughs> Well, okay. For the entire episode. Along well, no, with three that's Captain an episode and, by itself. And three, <laughs> yes, I know. and three Captain Jacks. No, Captain yeah. Jacks. That's <laughs> No, because Smith is never had Jack. And their yet. viewership doubles. <laughs> Acid blood is cool. Yes. <laughs> hey, Lena. You know, honestly, I would like to see when <laughs> he's so not leaving your glory. During those times where he's by himself. Ah, okay. You know, kind of like Storm when he's again. visiting every, everybody, like with Storm again, he's visiting right. everybody. I think that'd be a great time period when he's by himself, when he is alone. <sighs> that. Where he's not from anybody else in danger but himself. And that one would be fascinating. Or he, he ends up on a ship with a bunch of crew, and those are the exposable cockroaches. Awesome. Well, the thing, the, the fun thing, Matt Smith, as we saw, That's like, Beast Curtis Below. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis, thank you. God for coming back. <laughs> uh, the Beast Below, he was ready to kill. He was ready to yes. kill. Yeah. And it yeah. was Amy that was like, no, no, no. So, yeah, I think the Doctor on his own, after this time with Amy and Rory, yeah. would want to try to not kill. Yeah. And then be forced to. That would be, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that'd be really fascinating because, uh, because we can follow it up where, you know, he's finally decided to stop okay. running. I didn't get that one scene about him calling the Brigadier and finding out the point of the Crisco. I want to frame it with that, because I absolutely adore the Brigadier. And any reason to bring the bigger, bigger Brigadier back for just a moment. Would okay. Be so, very quickly, since we have five minutes, my question is, and I know you've all been waiting for this moment, how does Peter Cushing meet the Xenomorph? Because Peter Cushing was Doctor Who for 
two movies that don't yeah. count, except they do. No, actually they do. Except they do. They, they I said do that. Count. You should yes. listen to all of my sentences instead of inserting your opinion. <laughs> well, also, I'll start sure. Okay. Yeah. How does Peter Cushing well, meet Well, it would have to involve the Netflix. Because his movies only He's only movies. Movies. only time. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Could you imagine uh, a Xenomorph inside a Xenomorph dialogue? Dialogue. dialogue? Oh, dear God. That would be the Peter Cushing <laughs> movie. That would be the Peter Cushing wow. movie. That would be horrifying. Would it be a clone of Davros that gets Xenomorph so oh, he is half Davros, wow. Dalek, Xenomorph? I know that's three halves, but that's, that's, Peter. that's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how does Peter Cushing kill a Davalian? Davrolian? Davrolian. I like that one. That sounds evil. Oh, they answered the phone? What are you doing? Just talk. Uh, okay, but you're doing something. <laughs> yeah. There's flashing lights that are distracting. I'm sorry, what? Thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, How many of Peter Cushing's grandkids get sacrificed before he kills them? <laughs> Has anybody seen the Peter Cushing Doctor? They're a little weird. He's they're a little weird? They're a little weird. <laughs> In the fact that he's this human inventor who just invents a target. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how people complain about the, the new dialects being, you know, the Sentai dialects? Taste are, the are, rainbow. They, those rainbow. are actually very, very much <laughs> from <laughs> these movies. Yes. The, yeah. The, what the, you the, don't <laughs> know, what many people don't know is Daleks had different colors because they had specific yes. classes. Yeah. That, and the color of Dalek was a specific job that they had. That it's like Power Rangers, it seems. Uh, the Cybermen were the same way. Just oh my god. Can you imagine? <laughs> that would be so awesome! I want to see the gold Cyberman because I want to make the C3PO shit. <laughs> 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 Mommy! Revenge of the Cybermen, the uh, leaders, the Cyber Leader would have the uh, black, black cape and yes. cape sure. silver. Sure, sure. So, yeah, so Peter Cushing would stumble into it because Peter Cushing stumbled into a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, he did! As, as the doctor. And uh, yeah, that would I would think that would absolutely be what that is because it would be the third movie because it, yes. it would be the trilogy. <laughs> the trilogy. That's how you close out because the first two he's fought he's fought them and in this third one Davros, borrowing from a concept they had earlier, yes. hey, let's find this to try to wipe out the humans. Something goes horribly wrong for Davros, and he becomes yeah, absolutely. Yes. God, a mechanized xenomorph. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, just imagine. <laughs> Just rolling along the ground. <laughs> Hopefully, he needs a longer mouth because if you're rolling on the ground so fast, they can run faster than you. Oh, wow, my God, that's just the craziest, dangerous thing I've ever thought of. All right, so how does he kill him? How many of his grandchildren does he lose? He's got to lose one of them. He has to because that's what sobers him up and makes him go, oh, I'm not doing this no damn <laughs> Well, no, it would, be, it would be the ultimate sacrifice. He would have to sacrifice them all. Oh, wow. So he has a Captain Jack moment. Where is to sacrifice the ones he loves to save Captain the world. Captain Jack comes and talks him into it. How about like, that, oh, Davey? Look. Captain Jack, the noble hero who yes. saved the world by sacrificing a child. That's a good plan uh, you had. Captain <laughs> Jack. <laughs> I hate Captain Jack. Good question, guys. Yes. Yeah. And you throw in some foods. Oh, 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 oh. oh, could you imagine food alien? Could you imagine Ooch carrying around a damn egg? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it says! <laughs> Even better, Tom Baker would get the egg. Listen to it first. <laughs> Ooh, what is he gonna say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom Baker would listen to it first. And then it would spit out a little earwig from Star Trek 2. <laughs> yes! Two of them. Well, yeah, we've got uh, like two minutes. Yes. Questions, anybody? Um, comments? I'm so glad you said you're listening to those bullshit. <laughs> I want to read this fanfic. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm not reading it. Clayton. Well, no, no, we want it to be actually done sometime this year, so... Oh! Hey, I give Rich those scripts. <laughs> hey, seriously, questions, anybody? Uh, when did the Ood first appear? Uh, it was the impossible planet. Uh, what, which doctor? Uh, ten. ten. It was uh, Donna's first excursion after yeah. the, the wedding episode. Okay. Which is weird, you think you would have met them before. Yeah, you know, yeah. and which they then uh, goes to the processing plant, and we reach the theater, then ends up turning in. That's a good, that, you know, wow, that we might have, have to go back for 10 minutes. <laughs> that's actually that's yeah. pretty good. So I, I like the mumbling, the bumbling bone. I do too, but you know, kids not here to yell at us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
so there's that. Obviously, well, thank you for being here. Yes, and thank you. Thank this, you. Um, we do love us some Doctor Who, and we could postulate different villains. All yes. Day long. And if you want to see this madness again, we will be putting it up within the next few weeks on Galfrey Pirate yeah. Radio. You and can actually, find us on Facebook on Galfrey Pirate Radio. And you actually get to see. Actually, the first thing I'm going to be releasing from RavenCon is going to be the interview I did with Billy, which is probably one of the best interviews I've ever had talking Doctor Who so far with with the fan. Which I would like to remind you all that he said that I didn't. So if you love it, thank you. And if you didn't, it's his fault. Let's go. True. There was something other than alcohol in this cup. At some point, it was a mixer. It's a mixer. Oh, thank you. Mind. Thank you. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but yeah, and we recorded yeah. three videos all weekend. So if you liked yeah. this panel, you yeah. check us out. Both Doctor Who panels were recorded, and the, the interview. The interview with Billy. Yeah, and check out the, the stuff that we did. You guys did at Mysticon that I was partly involved with yes. as well. There's some good stuff there yes. as well. Geekradiodaily.com. Ding. Have a fantastic drive home. Yes. Don't drive angry. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you for staying to the very end. You want a sticker, too? Thank you. No. Okay. But thank you for offering. <laughs> I love that a shitty one. Thank you. I am so moved by that. Here, I offer you a gift. Air for my lungs. This was so much more entertaining than I, I had any reason to expect. <laughs>